All right, and welcome to Applications of Right Triangles. Now for number one, it says find the area of triangle ABC given AB is 18 inches. Well, we see here, you know, we see here AB is 18 inches, and we want to find the area. So it's important to first note, well, what's the area of a triangle? It is the base times the height all divided by two. And notice this is clearly the height, however, we do not have the base. So what are we going to do here when we have a right triangle and we know one side and we know one angle, but we're searching for the other side? Well, in this case, we want to use a little bit of trigonometry. So I draw my arrow through my right angle box. I know that it points to the hypotenuse. I know that if I circle my angle, the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, the adjacent side will be right next to each other. And of course, this 18 as the last side must be the opposite. Now you'll notice something. Our hypotenuse has no relevant information, so we care about the adjacent and the opposite side. When I go to write out so toa, well, since I care about the A and the O, that means I must be using my tangent function. Okay. And so now we have tangent of 38 degrees is equal to the opposite 18 over the adjacent. Now from here, guys, it's pretty simple. We know that since it's being divided by X, we'll multiply both sides by X. Now I have X tangent of 38 is equal to 18. And how do we get rid of the tangent of 38? Well, I simply divide both sides by the tangent of 38. Divide by the tangent of 38. Those cancel, and I get this. I get x is equal to, and I go to grab my calculator. And let's see. I'll have to do 18 divided by the tangent 38. And that will, of course, give me 23.04. Okay, now from here, now that I know that the base or the B term is that, I can now go ahead and find my area. We know that the area of a triangle is equal to <clears throat> the base, which in this case is 23.04 times the height, which is 18, all divided by 2. So I'll do 23.04 times 18, and I'll now get... 414.72, I'll divide that by 2, and we'll get our final answer, which is 207.36. And in this case, since it's inches, we'll write inches squared. All right, let's move on to our second example. Okay, here we have example 2, and we want to find the area of triangle ABC when given AD is 5, so let's go ahead and label that, AD is 5, and CA, or this whole bottom, is going to be 20. Now, notice something. Um, if I were to give you that this is a right angle, we would know that this is coming from a vertex to form a right angle or to be perpendicular to the other side. And what's special about that is that we know that this is something called an altitude. We learned about these in our very last lesson. We also know that the altitude is the geometric mean, I'll say it one more time, is the geometric mean of the two base segments. So let's go ahead and say this. If this whole line here is 20 and this is 5, well, if I have a whole and a part, we know that we'll do whole minus part to get the other part. And in this case, 20 minus 5 will give us 15. Now, what's the rule for the geometric mean? It means, you know, if we were to call this x and we were to call this y and we were to call this z, basically we would say that x times y is equal to z squared. Or in this case, if we did 5 times 15, it would equal x squared are unknown because we do not know the height of this triangle. Well, 5 times 15, that's pretty easy, that's 75. And then we have 75 is equal to x squared. Well, how do you get rid of a square? Take the square root. And so you have to go to your calculator, and the square root of 75 is 8.66. Now from here, why is this so important? 
Well, if you'll recall, we basically have this large triangle that has a height of 8.66 and a base of 20. <clears throat> we now have enough information to find the area of that triangle. So let me switch this orange, nice orange color here. Let's assume that the area of our triangle will be simply this. 20 times 8.66 all divided by 2. And guys, if you want to know the biggest place that you'll make mistakes in these problems, it's that you will not divide by 2. So we have 173.6, I'm sorry, it's 173.2 all divided by 2. And so it said that the final area of this particular triangle is 86.6 inches squared. All right. Let's move on to our third and final example. Okay, here we are in example three, and it says find the area of triangle ABC given AB is congruent to AC. So AB is congruent to AC. Well, what does this tell us? It tells us that this base angle here must also be congruent to that base angle right there. And that actually allows us to find the angles because this is in fact an isosceles triangle. We can do 180, minus 46, which will be 134. And once we divide this by two, we would say, you know what? Each one of these sides must be, or each one of these angles must be 67 degrees. Okay, I should have used a calculator here. Let me just double check real quick. 66, you want 20, 7, 7, 14. Yeah, okay. So now, notice something. We really still don't have a path forward here. If we had a right triangle though, we could use some trigonometry. And in fact, we can create a right triangle by dropping an altitude from our vertex to there. And notice what happens. This 8 gets cut in half to become 4. So let's see what our triangle looks like. <clears throat> we now can take this triangle on the left. And I'll kind of draw it. All right. And remember that purple line is forming that altitude. It's creating that right angle. And we know that the base here is four. And we also know that, oh, wait a second. Check this out up here. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll just check this out right here. That is an angle of 67 degrees. Now, in order for us to find the area of this triangle, we need to know the height. So we want to find that right there. Well, let's do our labeling. I draw my arrow. I know that this side over here is the hypotenuse. It has no information, so I really don't care about it. I circle my angle, and I know that the other side that goes into that circle must be the adjacent, and this height must be the opposite. And so from here, with our adjacent and our opposite, remember, we always want to write so -ka toa but with our O and our A, we're looking at the TOA, or the tangent of, or I'm sorry, tangent theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And let's fill in all of our information. We know that our theta, the angle, is 67 degrees, is equal to our opposite h over our adjacent 4. And this is kind of the nice version. When our number is in the denominator, we simply multiply both sides by 4. And we can say, you know what, 4 times tangent of 67 is equal to the height of this triangle. Now, of course, we'll go to our calculator. Let's say 4 times the tangent, 67, will actually give us 9.42 is equal to the height. Now, why is that so important? Well, guys, remember, we have this triangle over here where it has a base of 4, and now we know for a fact it has a height of 9.42. And notice that this triangle is, always, is already half of the original so the guys this is the part where I'm a little bit concerned for you guys all right so really pay attention since this is half of the original all we have to do is do the base times the height here and we'll have the area of the full triangle in this case we will not have to divide by two so the area of this triangle that's already cut in half will be equal to the base times the height or in this case, we'll say that our area is equal to 4 times 9.42. One more time, I cannot stress this enough. When you do 4 times 9.42, you have the answer 
and you do not have to divide by 2, the answer is 37.68 inches squared. We do not have to divide this by 2 because the triangle whose area we just found was already, that was already half of the original triangle. So this would be your answer, 37.68. All right, I'll catch you guys in our next lesson.